So today let's take a look at this giant jump starter power bank, which was donated to me. So thank you for your donation and let's unbox it and take a look at it and of course into it. Of course if you're interested just in the unboxing, you're watching a wrong channel. This one was donated to me, but unfortunately it took bloody long to arrive. But now it's finally there and let's take a look at it. So here is the power bank in a nice box and nice housing. Let's open it and you can see those cables supplied to it. Of course not just cables but also some protection circuitry in it and some display. This connector, this charging USB cable, some manual for it and here is the power bank in a nice bag and here it is. Looks quite big. There is even a compass, some display, a button. It shows the charge state in percents. And it even has a wireless charging. And it says 2500 amps. And a long press gives you a flashlight and some other modes of flashing. How do I turn it off? A long press of course and here is the USB, or actually two USB outputs. Here is the jump starter output and some other outputs, or actually even an input for charging a USB-C connector and a 12 volt output connector. And some marking, the model number, the jump starting output, the peak current and the USB input or output. Some other ratings of those USB outputs. So it has a quick charging. 5 volts 3 amps, 9 volts 2 amps or 12 volts 1.5 amps. And the other one is just 5 volts 2.1 amps. It has a 10 watt wireless output and the DC output is 12 to 16 volts 10 amps. It seems quite high up to 16 volts. But this output is probably connected directly to the cells in it, with no regulation. But let's also show the box with the pictures. LCD display screen, smart clamp with LED display, LED flashlight and SOS strobe. Dual USB, Type-C outputs for charging and wireless charging. And some specifications here. Here it's getting interesting, here's the battery capacity. 88.8 watt hours, the jump start output of course, the peak current, and again those USB voltages and currents, and again the DC output and wireless charging output. And that's it. And here's the manual, packaging list, some information about what each part of it does. And some data on it here. Battery cycle life, peak current, the voltages currents. Gas engine up to 8 liters or diesel engine up to 7 liters it can start. Some temperatures, charging time, 6 to 7 hours and the dimensions of it. And some instructions which nobody reads of course. Some symbols on the display. This is how to jump start the car using this and some safety information and so on. But before opening it let's try to guess what kind of cell configuration could be in it. There are more or less three options. The first one is three lithium ion cells in series. About 3.6 or 3.7 volts nominal. So in total they give 11.1 volts and fully charged they are about 4.2 volts or 12.6 from 3 in series. And of course the disadvantage of this configuration is that the voltage is a bit too low. You get this voltage only when it's fully charged but when you discharge it it very quickly falls to this voltage and it stays at this voltage for most of the discharge. Which means that you're starting the car using a lower voltage than it should be and it also has one more big consequence. The voltage is too low to charge the car battery. 
This jump starter configuration has no charging effect on the car battery, so it doesn't really recharge it before the starting end, so the discharged car battery has no contribution to the starting current, and the entire starting current has to go from the jump starter power bank. And the second possible configuration of a jump starter power bank is for lithium iron phosphate cells in a series, and those are different types of cells with different voltages. They are usually 3.2 volts nominal and about 3.6 or 3.7 volts fully charged. And lithium iron phosphate batteries have some advantages, they have a longer life and a higher peak current, but also a lower voltage and a lower energy density. And because of the lower voltage you have to put 4 in a series and you get about 12.8 volts nominal and 14.4 volts fully charged. But again, when discharging, it very quickly falls from this fully charged voltage to this voltage and it stays at this voltage for most of the discharge. But you already get some charging effect. It can recharge the car battery a little bit, or at least give it a surface charge, so the car battery may contribute to the starting current when starting the car. And the last possible jump starter configuration is for lithium ion batteries in a series which give about 14.8 or 14.4 volts nominal, which is kind of the perfect voltage to charge the car battery. It's roughly the same voltage as the voltage coming from your alternator. But the fully charged voltage may be a little bit too high, actually. But given that this marking says up to 16 volts output, it may be this configuration. Now let's try to measure the voltage coming from the jump starter connector, and the voltage is 15.35 volts, which means that it has to be this configuration. The other configurations would never give such a high voltage. But let's also test those USB outputs, and nothing, I probably have to press the button and it runs. And it can supply 5 volts, 2.5 amps. And the other one, 2.678, 3.4 amps, this is the more powerful output. And it even supports the quick charging, 9 volts, and probably a little over 2 amps, and also 12 volts probably, yes, up to about 1.5 amps, plus some headroom. About 2 amps, actually. Food has quite nice USB outputs. It works as a power bank. And of course you can charge it using this USB-C cable that comes with it. And it charges at 5 volts and nearly 3 amps. That's nearly 15 watts. Basically what this one says. But now of course, let's take a look inside of it to see the internals. There are 4 screws. Or 5. Five screws out and it still doesn't open. Are there some screws under this? Well, no screws under this. It seems that I have to just pry it more. And it opens. And here you can see the internals of it. It's split into several boards, or actually two boards, plus one tiny one for the LED. And on this board you have four chips and the display. And some capacitor here, which is probably the resonant capacitor in the wireless charging system. And here's the high frequency coil on some ferrite core, basically. And it wirelessly transfers the energy into the charged device. And this board is connected with the other one using two cables. There is some capacitor, some tiny inductor for some probably buck regulator, some SMD diode and some tiny resistors, capacitors, and that's it. And I removed two screws from it, and let's zoom it, and let's see the other side of it. And of course I have to be careful because it's not disconnected from the battery. And here's the display, with some custom symbols on it, and a button, and not much else from this side of the board. And this seems to indicate what kind of ports are in use. And it now shows that USB port 1 is in use and it shows the voltage it's supplying. 5 volts, or 9 volts, or 12 volts.
and the other port is just 5 volts. And when it's charging it says in and it's blinking. And now let's try to use a couple turns of a wire, make a coil here and it's connected to my oscilloscope and when I press the button it's doing something. It's pulsing and probably checking for some device in vicinity. But when there is some device in the range of it, it would probably run continuously, not in pulses. There is definitely some signal, but unfortunately I have no device that could charge from this. But now let's put this board back and let's take a look at the other board. And let's also take a look at the battery of course and it seems to be four cells in it. But it's glued in and I don't want to separate it because it could damage the battery. But anyway, we already know it's four cells and now let's take a look at this board. And there is a lot of it on it. Some diodes, some tiny transistors, resistors, capacitors, two chips here, some three pin chip or transistor, another diode, the connector going to the LED and some transistor controlling it probably and some five pin chip, three pin chip or transistor and those USB ports. And now let's take a look from the other side of it. It was on four screws and now it should come out and it does and the battery has some temperature sensor probably on it. And on the other side of the board there are some bigger and more interesting components. Here are the USB ports and USB-C port, some electrolytic capacitors probably in parallel to the power and three inductors on some freighter iron powder cores probably in some buck or boost regulators and several chips, another six pin chip here, some three pin chips or transistors maybe, another tiny chip here, a lot of tiny resistors, capacitors, some very low resistance resistors, 0 0.02 ohms, probably current sensing shunts and three bigger transistors. Another current sensing shunts, 0 0.012 ohms or 12 milliohms, and some diodes here. And here's the connector going to the battery. The two red cables are probably the positive, the two black ones are the negative, and those three ones are the middle points of the battery. So the board can balance the cells in the battery or at least monitor each voltage individually. And it seems that each of the USB ports has its own voltage regulation and this inductor probably goes to this port and it goes to this chip and the back regulator is probably in this chip and this USB port has this inductor and its chip is probably this. It's connected through the inductor to the port and those capacitors are probably in parallel to the voltage of those ports and the last inductor is for this port and it's controlled probably by this chip. It's probably a buck regulator to get the USB voltage from the battery voltage but also a boost regulator to boost the voltage at the input to charge the battery. And those resistors are probably sensing the current of this output and this transistor is probably its protection. I guess it has no voltage regulation but it has a protection against a deep discharge of the battery and overcurrent. And those current sensing resistors are sensing the current of the battery and those two transistors are probably the battery protection. And the battery goes via those resistors into the source of this transistor and the drain of it is connected with the drain of the other one and from the source of it it goes into the circuitry. So the transistors are connected in anti-series so basically the protection can switch it in both directions. If there was just one transistor it could turn off but its internal diode would still conduct in one direction. And the individual cell voltages are 3.83, again the same, once again and the last one, again exactly the same voltage, that's nice, it seems to be very nicely balanced. And the transistor in the 12 volt output protection is a p-channel MOSFET and it's switching the positive. But it's just a protection, no regulation. This output has the full battery voltage on it. 
And of course, those battery protection MOSFETs are for the USB port, send the wireless charger and the other circuitry, but not for this jump starter output. This is connected directly to the battery and it has its own protection in this one. And some close-ups and those MOSFETs. And some tiny chip here. And the chips from the other side are those. And here's the waveform of the USB output back regulator in 12 volt mode, a lower duty cycle in 9 volt mode, and even a lower duty cycle in 5 volt mode. And the switching frequency is 120 kHz. And when it's charging, it's running as a boost regulator from 5 volts to the battery voltage about 15 volts, and it's switching at 125 kHz. And I think that the USB output can be done as a back regulator up to the 12 volt mode, because the battery voltage is always higher than 12 volts. Even when it's nearly discharged, it's slightly over 3 volts per cell or slightly over 12 volts in total. And this LED torch seems to be something like a 1 watt LED, probably 2.76 volts and about 90 milliamps. Actually, just one quarter of a watt. And one more detail of this board. Are the markings of the chips visible? I hope so. And the energy in the battery is 88.8 watt hours and divided by the number of cells is 22.2 watt hours per cell. And let's divide it by the cell voltage, 3.7 volts, and we get 6 amperes. So the cells are 6 amperes or 6000 milliampers. But because this video is getting too long, let's open this protection box in another episode. So this is Diagno Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course you can also become my patron to support my channel and get early videos. And I also plan to open more of those dodgy USB chargers, quick ones.